Today I'm going to be giving you guys an in-depth review of the 2022 Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Now before we get started with the history segment, I wanted to let you guys know some of the shoes that we will be using in today's comparison. We got the Off-White Chicago Air Jordan 1, we got the 2015 Chicago Retro, we have the New Beginnings Air Jordan 1, and then we have the AJKO from 2010. There's a lot of different elements from these shoes right here that align with the 2022 version, and I'm excited to get into that later in the video. But you know on this channel, we gotta talk about the history first. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the times of 1985 when we saw the Air Jordan 1 coming on the scene. It's a very iconic colorway to go alongside with the Chicago colorway as well. Michael Jordan has had a huge impact in the game over the past 37 years, releasing a ton of models. But no matter what, at the end of the day, the Chicago one still holds place in a lot of people's hearts as one of the greatest sneakers of all time, not only for Jordans, but sneakers ever. And over the years, we have seen a ton of different retro iterations from the 1995 version or even the 2003 patent leather mid. The AJKO also came out back in the 80s as well, and we saw retro iterations of that, and this is considered to be be the Chicago colorway for that shoe. But before that, we saw another retro that came out in 2010, and this was the Chicago Air Jordan 1 KO, and it had an actual Jordan 1 bottom on there compared to the KO bottom, similar to the OG style. Following that 2010 AJKO release, we then saw the 2013 version, which was more of the Air Jordan retro highs, and that was where we saw the Jumpmans on the back, and honestly, not that many people were big fans of it. But at the end of the day, a lot of us sneakerheads back then, we still took what we could get. Luckily, two years later, we saw the 2015 retro right here and I can tell you right now this shoe in particular changed the game for Air Jordan 1s from 2015 to now. It took a little time for this sneaker to warm up and it slowly got more and more expensive. Then the last dance came out. Next thing you know, this was a thousand dollar shoe with no question. So over the past years, we know there has been a lot of hype behind Air Jordan 1s and that's what's bringing us to this pair of sneakers right here. All the hype, all the anticipation, classic, nostalgic, iconic model, colorway, you name it. Sneakerheads around the world have a lot of high expectations when it comes to this shoe. So I'm excited to break down all the styles, cuts, materials, and details and every little aspect of this sneaker because trust me, they mixed a lot of different things when it comes to this one and we definitely didn't get that OG 85 style, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Right now, we need to crack open this box. Starting with the lid, as you can see, you have your classic OG style Air Jordan 1 box but on the lid right here, it's more of an orange. Now, typically the box has that black with the black lid and the red on the top, but when they call the lost and found, which we'll get into a little bit later as we open up the box, this was that style of like essentially, you found this pair deep in a warehouse back at an old shoe store and they didn't have a lid for it and they just put a replacement lid on there from some OG box and they gave you the classic receipt and everything like that. So that's kind of the theme when it comes to the packaging of this shoe. And we'll talk about how they went with the branding and the storytelling a little bit later in the video as well, because originally we were considering these to be the Air Jordan 1 reimagined, and we thought that was gonna be like the 85 style. But again, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But looking at this lid right here, it's kind of dope because it's got like the messed up edges and everything like that, giving you that old school vintage vibe. And as you lift up the lid right here, you have this old school receipt, it says Sandy's bros right here sports department and it's got that classic old school you know pin right on there and they act like they paid for it what's the retail price on here is this 74.99 or is that 14.99 i can't tell either way that must have been a good deal back in the day so right here it says 86 like it's got the old school age and everything like that on it it's got the signature air jordan one basketball shoes paid final sale all the different stuff so seeing this right here just gives you that classic style like you know how we had the retro cards and everything like that this is like one of those elements to the shoe that just makes it even doper for a lot of the sneaker heads that love all the little accessories and trinkets and things like that now Next up right here, this isn't your classic paper right here. It actually looks more like a newspaper. So it's kind of like that same line of like, oh, they didn't have any paper for it. They just wrapped them in newspaper like they used to do way back in the days. Remember when people used to, I mean, honestly, people might still do it. They used to clean their windows with newspaper and the Windex and everything. Either way, that's a whole nother topic. But when you look at the newspaper right here, you can see you have a bunch of different things on here with the different prices, $29.99, Air Jordan 1. You got the flight suit and the KO and different colorways. 59.99 wings logo OG Jordan picture right here. You got the jump man sign. So all these little things and the details when it comes to the paper is a nice hit for storytelling and just bringing back that nostalgic vibe 
for a very classic sneaker like this. Now lifting up the paper right here, you have another set of white paper and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Normally at this point of the video, I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the shoe, but we've already done that in my previous video I just released a couple days ago. So if you wanna go check that out, make sure you will check that one out after this video. But either way, at the end of the day, yes, I love the shoe. I wanna have multiple in my Starting with the outsole, as you can see right here, you have your classic Air Jordan 1 retro style. Outsole. One thing that I do like about these is they gave it that old school vibe and this is something I have seen in the past that I wanted to bring back up because I vividly remember copping the 2010 KO. And look how similar these look together side by side. Now making our way up to the midsoles, as you can see right here, it looks like a white but it's more of a stale color. Put this next to the 2015 retro, you can see that it does have more of a stale tint to it. I remember during that time when these like, originally came out, everybody was trying to get into the last but when it comes to the actual midsole of this foot i feel like these are a lot more similar to the trophy room ones now going to the upper there's definitely a lot of differences when it comes to the materials based on the previous pairs that we've seen in the past so i want to make sure that we cover that as well so yes this sneaker does have the classic air jordan one chicago color blocking but you can see you have the cracked leather right here around the collar on the back end where the black leather is at and then here on the side panels where the white leather is or on the toe box on both sides here on this other side panel so you got some different elements on that part but let's start with this red leather right here because these actually are different than the 2015 pair so now when you put these two side by side you can see that the colors are a little bit different it's like the 2022 retro is a little bit deeper a little bit darker when it comes to the red and these ones pop a little bit more on the 2015 15 pair but another thing is if you look at the leathers and feel the leathers the leather actually does feel a little bit nicer i would say on the 2022 retro the 2015 is really nice as well um i think the difference though is this has more of a dull kind of a matte finish on it when it comes to the 2022 retro compared to this one it's just a little bit shinier on the finish on the 2015 retro so looking at this leather all around i would say it looks like it's a little bit nicer when it comes to the quality of it i think some people may be on the the fence when it comes to how they feel about the shade of the red let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section now the next thing i want to talk about is the air jordan wings logo right here on the side of the foot when i was first looking at the wings logo i thought it was going to be a little bit more shiny like the 2015 version and then i realized oh it's actually a little bit more dull similar to the off-white air jordan one but as i started to look at the shoe a little bit more i was like wait a minute they didn't even print it like they normally do on those versions they did it similar to the 1985 wings logo that we see on the new retro 85 cut Air Jordan 1 from the previous couple years. So when you look at these two side by side, I would say these are definitely the most similar to the 85 cut retro style Air Jordan 1s. Was that something that you guys noticed from beforehand or is that something that you're just finding out now? Because honestly, I didn't really realize it and I wasn't truly paying attention to it. And I thought that was a cool little touch and a nice little mixture between the different elements that we're seeing on this shoe. So the next thing I wanna look at is the black leather on the swoosh. Now, when it comes to the materials and the overall shade of it and the finish of it i feel like these definitely do look very similar to the 2015 retro on that aspect but the overall cut of this sneaker is different than the 2015 retro which we'll get into in a second when it comes to the overall shape of the shoe we gotta go over the cracked leather and the other elements of the shoe real quick so like i was talking about earlier this has more of that cracked leather look to it when it comes to the white areas or the black panel on the back end and as you touch it and i'm not sure if you can hear it i'll try to get some good sound for you guys close to the mic but it has more of a rough finish to it where you can actually hear it and feel the strokes of it being more rough. And I feel like it actually might flake off over time. I'm not sure, we'll see what happens as people wear the shoe. That might be another thing where this starts to crack and crumble off and the shoe turns a different color. I don't know, I haven't seen a lot of people wear this shoe enough to really make the shoe kind of deteriorate like that. But that is something that might be another element to the shoe. Let me know if you know anything about that down below in the comment section. But before we move on from that, I want to talk about the Ama Air Jordan 1. Those in particular, kind of we've seen that recently on the sneakers lately, the Ama 2s, different things like that. And when you put these two side by side, looking at the vamp right here on the toe, you can see they definitely do look different. 
So if you still have the Amon 2s or know that style, you could say, yes, it is similar, but I would say this kind of in its own little category when it comes to Jordan 1s and this style of leather on there. I can't remember off the top of my head what Jordan 1 is exactly like this with the exact same materials. If you guys know, let me know down below in the comment section. But for these in particular, I would say they're kind of in their own lane. Now going to the tongue of the shoe right here, instead of having that pure white look to it, you got more of that sale finish on there. You got the Nike Air branding with the red tab and the Nike Air in the white stitch. And then these come equipped with a pair of white laces and black laces already pre-laced on the front end of the shoe. And then you'll have to unlace one and then lace in the color that you want to use. Let me know what you guys think would be best for the laces. Do you usually go with the white laces or do you rock with the black laces? I know on my 2015 pair, my beater pair that I rock, I typically wear the black laces. But I think these in particular, they will look really good with some sail laces. Let me know what you guys think down below on that aspect of the shoe. Now looking at the sock liner right here, you got an all black sock liner and then on the insole, classic all white insole with the red Nike Air on both sides right there. And you just got that classic iconic Nike Air vibe all throughout this sneaker. Now I'm sure you guys have a bunch of questions when it comes to price projections on this shoe. So when it comes to these in particular, it's the Chicago Air Jordan 1. You can never go wrong with this shoe. I can guarantee this shoe will never be reselling for just over retail price. I can guarantee these will be double or triple retail right off the rip. So if the shoe is 180 bucks, these are probably gonna be selling right now in current market, 350, 400 bucks. Some people, okay, they might go down a little bit. You might be able to find that good deal. But in time, just like all these other ones that I showed you guys in today's video, all these shoes are like $1,000 or more because it's one of the most iconic, nostalgic, just best Air Jordan 1s to ever be made. So because of that, people say they can get mad at like, oh, they already came out with those. Why are they doing it again? They're trying to tell different stories. They're trying to do it in different ways. And also a lot of people forget just because you've been a sneakerhead for a while, that doesn't mean there's new young sneakerheads coming into the game that want to buy those OG nostalgic sneakers and really be, you know, really immersed into the shoe culture, not just going after all the hype and everything like that. Because yes, this could be considered a hype sneaker, but at the end of the day, I understand why it is hyped. It's iconic. You want to have it. It makes sense. If you have ties to it and memories of it, or if you love Jordan as a player and you've seen the last dance and that made you fall in love with the shoe or whatever it is, everybody has their own stories behind the sneakers and i think at the end of the day if you like this shoe definitely go after this shoe and at the price that it is now i'm telling you you're probably going to be getting a really good deal if you do have to pay that resale price because if you look a couple years from now especially five or ten years from now this shoe is going to be worth a lot of money and i truly have no doubt about that part now when it comes to a couple myths and stories and other things that we heard of that maybe you guys did or didn't hear of but i wanted to bring it up as well i've been hearing more people say this sneaker the overall cut and shape of it is more similar to the 1990 95 version that we saw back in the day so that was kind of more of a 10 year anniversary vibe where we saw the different box and we saw the bread ones also come out during that time and i used to have a pair but they were size 12 and i grew out of them and i'm so salty because i wish i still had those that is such a fire shoe they're so expensive now damn i messed up either way it's okay because i couldn't fit them anyway so i'm looking for a 13. if anybody has a 13 let me know the og 85 and the 95 i need both of those in the 13. I would prefer a dead stock pair, but if they're lightly worn and it look really clean, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing my wire out there trying to fish for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get me a pair too. But either way, I don't have them in hand anymore to give you guys that comparison. But if you look at these photos of the 2022 version compared to the 2015 version, you can see on the back end of the shoe, the difference with the heights and the cuts of the materials and everything. They're definitely not the same exact shape of that 2015 retro that we all fell in love with. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about is the anniversary of the Air Jordan 1. The time is coming, y'all. We're almost at 40 years since 1985. So what does that mean? 2025 is going to be that anniversary year. So does this mean we're going to see this one now, like we saw the Jordan version in 2013 and then the 2015 version with the Nike Air? Could this be the pair that we're seeing now? And we've seen one new iteration of the 85 each year. Could they continue this cycle of the 85 cuts going and leading up until 2025? And that's where they really unload the floodgates and let us get all the 85 cut Air Jordan 1s or a vast majority of them in the O2 colorway. We're talking metallics, royals, all those different things. I'm sure right now a lot of sneakerheads would love it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments.
Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight-week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy, and I'll see you guys over there.